What's good YouTube and welcome to the house. Today we're going to talk about the five worst erratas to Yu-Gi-Oh cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh history so far. But in order to talk about that, let's define what an errata is. Simply put, it is a change to the card text of a card for one of two reasons. The first reason being that you need to clarify to duelist what the card does. It seemed poorly written and it's not clear how it would interact with other their cards or two to change the actual effect of what it does maybe it's not as interpreted from the ocg or they actually want to change the effect say for a banned card which has happened quite often the mad lad who invented Yu-Gi-Oh wants to bring every banned card back once in the ocg but in order to do that they've been nerfing a lot of them and some of these hits have been really bad in my opinion so take necro valley here you have a earlier printing of it versus a later and the effect actually completely changes and adds on that it negates the effect of anything that would change types or attributes in the graveyard. Just a little buff. So Necro Valley's had clearing text, nerfing text, buffing text. It's basically been through it all. And as an example of a card, you can go search for and see its erratas in text. However, I think there's good examples and bad examples of what was needed for coming off of a ban list slash changes. Imperial Order really stays true to what it used to do, although it did receive a nerf in the fact that its owner can't just turn off its effect anytime like they used to. Used to, you could just choose not to pay the life points. Now you must pay the life points. It is not optional, meaning the owner is stuck under Imperial Order's Floodgate-like effect as well as the opponent, and they must keep paying the life points. Crush Card Virus was so powerful as a prize card and really dictated the flow of the game and had a ridiculous effect i feel like it needed to be nerfed and they found an okay balance in doing so yes it's not the powerhouse it once was but this card could not come back under its original effect so let's get into my opinion the top five worst erratas for what they were they really changed what the card was or did and not in a better way. So, Future Fusion's my number five here. An original Future Fusion lets you send immediately from your decks to the graveyard fusion materials for a monster that is in your extra deck, and then you can summon that card in two turns. The new one makes you wait a whole turn, so you let them know what's coming, and then wait a whole turn in order to get those mills. In my opinion, there was a better balance to be had. Perhaps you could have made it and limited the amount of cards future fusion could have sent immediately but changing the card to its pacing that this has to remain untouched in an entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh, where right now Yu-Gi-Oh ends in one turn typically there's not many cards that are actually going to stymie your opponent from killing you immediately there's an ftk running around that is meta so you could be playing a card that takes two turns and get killed before you even got a chance to play it it really hurts to see this so i feel like if this is a great potential for fusion summoning and it was too great at one point like at one point you're able to play this card slap down the materials maybe use a card that helps you fuse from graveyard right away i get that it hurt the potential future as it was that's why it ended up on the ban list for fusion summoning but I think you could have made it still help fusion summoning, just limited the amount of materials done in order to help this card stick around. Now, each of these cards on my list are banned cards, and at one point or another, they're way too powerful for the game, and even today in their older text would have been too powerful, but I just think there's a lot of better fixes for them. Let's go take a look at our next old friend from Invasion of Chaos, and that's Dark Magician of Chaos. Now, the original versions are on the left of my screen, and the first edition IOC basically had a bit too much going on for him. When he's normal or special summoned successfully, you add a spell card from your graveyard to your hand, so you could kind of loop monster reborn back in the day premature burial cards like that then any monster that's destroyed by him as a result of battle is removed from play instead and then when he's destroyed he's vanished so the last two parts stay true to him but in the newer version you have to wait till the end phase in order to add that spell card in your graveyard and he's also a hard once per turn on that effect meaning you can't use multiple demox even though you have to wait all the way to the end phase to get that card in my opinion 
All you needed was that once per turn clause. You needed to make sure he could not loop. He could not be continuously abused and you couldn't abuse multiple copies. This would limit the card in what it did in its applications to the game, making sure that it's nice and balanced, that you only are striking Demok on the hot iron of getting that spell back once per turn. The old card didn't have that. The old card just, you could do Demok as many times as possible and kind of try to get his effect off uh, and get really busted spell cards back. Spells used to be some of the most powerful cards in the game, and now it's more like they're resources to get you to your monsters. They're not independent cards that, like, people don't main deck Regeki. That's how crazy this game is. But in my opinion, Demok could have been handled with a little more care. A little more thought towards what he originally did, rather than, again, kind of similar to Future Fusion, saying, you're gonna have to wait a bit, you're gonna have to hold that spell in the end phase, and then you're gonna have to wait till the next next turn, your opponent gets turned, then you can go ahead and use it. It just completely murders it out of today's game of Yu-Gi-Oh, and makes sure that it really doesn't get to see any play we haven't seen top cut decks play it since it came back at all and i think it could have had a little bit of potential maybe to not even top but at least see some play with a once per turn effect and my third place position here is brain control this has been removed entirely from what it used to do you you used to pay 800 life points and target any face-up monster your opponent controls. You take control of that target until the end phase. The new version, you pay 800 life points and you target a face-up monster your opponent controls. That can be normal summon intercept, meaning you cannot touch anything from the extra deck with brain control. And you take control of the target till the end phase. So what's the difference between this than another card running around at 3 called mind control? Oh right, you could attack with the monster you take with that. Oh no, the power. And yeah, actually at one point in the game that was way too powerful for the game but essentially this locks you out of being able to do what the card intends whereas mind control it can just take an extra deck monster you can just go ahead and take it and use it as a link material an axes material a synchro material depending on what you might want to take it for yes brain control if you could just take a monster and attack with it it could be very powerful and you could have just create a mind control clone and i don't really know how i would fix it it's almost one of those cards i feel better left off in Yu-Gi-Oh! history and you could have just left banned than completely just taking away its power, neutering it, and bringing it back into the format. It is utter... It's just utterly ridiculous. What? Nobody's playing brain control. Period. If you are, I'm sorry, but you're not topping events. Like, this card was taken from its once great status and chopped down and out. And I, I think there could have been a better fix, perhaps, if you truly worked hard on it. But Mind Control exists as a three of. And you don't see it really... There's formats where it completely phases out. There's formats where it comes back in and it actually sees play. But this this was just ruined for what it was. It's, it's old glory taken away from it. And our number two position is an old, old friend, though. You might recognize him from GOAT format, and that's Sinister Serpent. So his old effect was, just during the standby phase of this card's in your graveyard, you can return it to your hand. Its new effect in a convoluted way says, you can't really send this back to the graveyard again the turn after you get it back. So during your standby phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can add it to your hand. Kind of like the old effect. Also banish a Sinister Serpent card from your graveyard during your opponent's next end phase. So if you were to use it as a cost, or use it for a Link Summoner, use it for anything after getting it back it's gone it's gone and that's what happens to him and this is a one of the slowest resources in all of Yu-Gi-Oh if you look at modern Yu-Gi-Oh this isn't getting abused and there's multiple answers for it DD Crow back in the day was an answer for this first off now we have called by the grave we have cards that actually can just take care of cards in the graveyard if this ever became any sort of problem but with its resource ability you're not really worried about any creation of cards in the game that are going to say Hmm, I'm really scared about them getting one card back from their graveyard to pitch his cost during next standby phase. Yes, the Nightmares, they pitch cards, but you're not worried about this card coming back. They're looping Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. They're looping much more busted cards. There was no need to do anything to Sinister Serpent in order to bring him back, yet here we are with a completely different card in a lot of senses that just doesn't cut it.
It, it really just stops you from making any kind of resource out of him compared to what he used to be. And the final card, one of the most recent erratas that I really despise how they changed it, is Disc Commander. The old version is, when this card is special summoned from the graveyard, draw two cards. So you have to get him to the graveyard and special summon him. Actually, a pretty easy thing to do in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But its new effect reads, cannot be special summoned from the graveyard the turn this card was sent. So you're waiting a turn, avoiding all those cards we just talked about, like called by the grave, etc. If this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you can draw two cards. You can only use this effect once per duel i think you didn't have to do any of that and all you had to do was slap a hard once per turn on this commander you just had to say look this commander you can't be looped you can only use your effect once they've got to spend their resource get you down there bring you back so they have to basically use two different cards to do this and you can only draw once you can't go further i get it's a warrior you could use it with armageddon and go to isold but you'd rather have something like destiny hero malicious going to grave where you can get a resource over and over for link summoning disc commander just didn't need this kind of hit to see these old cards come back as just something completely different you could have done retrains you could have created brand new cards that paid homage to the original versions but instead you've slapped them down said yeah they're back but they're just not the same it's like going i say this all the time it's going to a pizza place with your friend after four years you haven't seen them in four years they want to catch up and you can tell they're a completely different person they're not the person you used to know that's how i feel about these erratas Thanks for watching. What do you guys think? Are you actually fans of these erratas? You can have a different opinion than me. And what are some maybe worse erratas that I miss? I know people feel a certain type of way about Crush Card Virus. Goyo Guardian being an Earth specific instead of generic, which really stops it from being even considered for play in a lot of decks. What are some of the worse erratas you guys feel? Or do you just not care? Are you like, I, I wasn't around when these cards were out. I don't really care what happens to them. I feel like a legacy to the game is is important for a lot of the older duelists and maybe that's just me talking old man john but subscribe if you haven't already give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the discussion check me out on patreon two more five dollar patreons and we will be uh, doing a p.o box for you guys to send cards into and stuff and get card signed send them back that that kind of thing so be sure to check that out out as well thanks for watching so much guys